it's Chris. This might be the most useful iPad related video you've ever seen. That's what I'm going for. So I've got some fresh tips, some techniques, some accessories for you to check out. But first, just to make this as useful as humanly possible, just really quickly, I'm gonna recap some of the coolest, most interesting, useful things that we've covered that relate to the iPad on this channel. I've covered a lot of iPad tips in the past. Some of my favorites have included double tapping the control button to quickly bring up voice dictation, which I use constantly, using the selection tool in Apple Notes to select things you've already written or drawn in one color and then changing them to a new color, and creating an AirPods shortcut widget if you want a fast manual connection without going into settings for those who don't like automatic AirPods switching. Of course, I've introduced lots of mind-blowing productivity apps like Muse, the spatial thinking canvas, which recently helped me plan my new desk setup, Endless Paper, the sketching and note-taking app with the truly unlimited canvas, and the seriously unique Task Heat, which creates a flow chart out of your to-do list. Some of the most interesting iPad accessories I've featured so far have included the Sketchboard Pro, which creates a totally flat surface for iPad drawing, the Adonit Note M, which is an Apple Pencil alternative, which isn't just a stylus, but can also act as an iPad mouse, and of course, what might be my favorite iPad accessory of all time, Paperlike, which makes writing and drawing with an Apple Pencil truly feel like writing on real paper. In fact, I've grown so attached to Paperlike that an iPad almost doesn't even seem like an iPad without one. I've also definitely shown you guys some interesting ways to use iPads, from using that ridiculously aesthetic Ficlo Clock app as a sort of iPad screensaver, to using the iPad Pro's Magic Keyboard as the main keyboard for my Mac setup using Sidecar, to simply using the iPad as a monitor for my camera when I'm shooting these YouTube videos. So yeah, I'm an enthusiastic iPad fan, and I love sharing the things that I learn with you guys. But what I wanna do right now is shift out of recap mode and shift into tip mode. But then we're gonna get to some accessories, some fresh accessories, and also some techniques that will help you get the most out of your favorite stylus, the Apple Pencil. Now, these tips that we're gonna get into I'm gonna call them don't forgets because maybe you've run into these things before, but I'm guessing that you're not getting the most out of them. So don't forget that you can open slide over by bumping your mouse cursor a little bit under the top right corner of the screen. And you can also close slide over the exact same way. And even cooler, you can shoot slide over all the way over to the other side of the screen with a longer swipe. Also don't forget to put your widgets to good use. For instance, you can use the Calzi app widget to make sure you've always got a handy calculator that's just a swipe away. Also, if you wanna keep your home screen free of app icons, just use the Siri suggestions widget or even multiple Siri suggestion widgets to launch the apps you need at just the right time. Now, don't forget that you can take a screenshot by dragging the Apple Pencil diagonally from the bottom corner of the screen to get right into marking it up. Also don't forget that you can hit Command plus Spacebar to search from within any app and that you can drag apps right out of that search to jump right into multitasking, which is especially useful for loading up apps in slide over even when you can't see them in the dock. And don't forget that you can add or delete buttons that appear in Control Center in the Control Center settings. And also don't forget that you can long press on many of those buttons to see some extra options. And whatever you do, please don't forget that dragging and dropping doesn't have to be just one item at a time. You can load up lots of text highlights or photos or items for a much more efficient drag and drop routine. Don't forget, you can quickly switch between open apps using a trackpad and a three finger swipe gesture. It's so fast. Don't forget that you can use your iPad as a second display for your Mac using Sidecar and that you can use your Apple Pencil in apps like Photoshop or Illustrator which effectively turns your iPad into a graphics tablet for your Mac. Also, when you're in Sidecar, don't forget you can turn on or off those touch bar controls for either more functionality or more screen real estate. And lastly, don't forget that you can pinch that full screen software keyboard to get a smaller size keyboard, which is perfect for swiping around with your thumb or a finger. Oh yeah, and don't forget you can move it around for the best possible placement. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. <laughs> That's gonna be seared into your memories for the rest of the day. But look, let's get into some accessories. It's CE 
PS time. It's the start of a brand new year. Some things aren't going great this year, but here's some things that should make you very excited. And yes, I'll make sure to link these up in the description so you don't even have to ask. I just found out that Kensington announced what might be the coolest iPad stand definitely of the year, but maybe of all time. It's called the Studio Dock, and it lets you magnetically attach your iPad to the stand and then rotate it freely between portrait and landscape modes. It's 2021, so of course it has built-in wireless charging on the base for your iPhone and for your AirPods, perfect. And it even features a dock on the back with lots of useful ports, including an audio jack, an ethernet port, an HDMI, and some USB ports. That is brilliant, honestly, because I don't like having a big hub sticking out of the side with the USB port. This is so much better. I love that there's an SD card reader on the side of the stand, and you can even charge your Apple Watch here if you want to. Yeah. Wow. Sateki also just announced the Dock 5 multi-device charging station, which is great for charging multiple devices at once. I would say this is about as sleek as a charging hub can get, which is to say they're never going to look all that great, but this looks as good as I think you could imagine it being. And yes, it has a Qi wireless charging pad, so you can at least wirelessly charge those AirPods or your iPhone. I'd say this is a pretty cool accessory for the modern office, whether you're working from home or not. And maybe this is something that you would even just stick on your nightstand. Here's another iPad accessory I recently came across I think you're gonna love. It's called the Quad Tray, and it comes in several different varieties. It's kind of a cross between a multi-device charger and an organizer for all your stuff. So yeah, it can charge that big, huge iPad of yours along with maybe your phone or your Apple Watch, but you can also drop in your everyday carry items here like your wallet or your keychain. The quad tray comes in several color options so you can just match it right up with your style. And you can also choose between a USB-C or a lightning cord. And I have to say, I'm really glad that it comes with the Apple Watch charger built right in. Now, just the other day, I ran into some Apple pencil tips that ironically are called pen tips. They're colored silicon nibs and they're supposed to keep your Apple pencil tip from wearing down. Maybe it provides a little resistance, although for my money, I would probably just go with a paper-like because at least you get some screen protection too, but still, somebody out there is gonna like this. Also, don't forget that Google Stadia is now available in beta for iPad OS, which means you can use the game controller of your choice or the official Stadia controller to play top games on your iPad through Safari. Now that's kind of cool because there's a free tier and you can play games like Destiny 2 on your iPad without having to pay. So if you're kind of tired of the types of games you can find in Apple Arcade, this might be worth checking into, especially if you already have a Gmail account since this is run by Google. Now, we're gonna turn the corner or do like a 180 and we're gonna talk about the Apple Pencil. I found this really interesting site that intrigued me. It was Untools, it's untools.co and it provides some thinking frameworks to help you make some decisions. When I saw it, I thought, whoa, those techniques would pair perfectly with my iPad setup. But yeah, these frameworks are cool and I wanna give you a little demo. One example of a cool thinking framework that I think is perfect for iPad users is the iceberg model, which helps you uncover root causes that are often hidden in plain sight. So you know the phrase, that's just the tip of the iceberg? Well, the tip of the iceberg is represented by events. So ask yourself what is happening right now and write it on the event level on your iceberg. But then you can start looking at patterns and then ask what the trends are over time. And after that, you can look at structures and ask what is influencing these patterns or what are the connections between patterns. And then a level deeper, you can look at some mental models and ask what values or beliefs or assumptions are shaping that system as a whole. And once you start digging way down deeper and go way past the surface level in your iceberg, then you can actually start understanding some causes for things. This is a really powerful framework. I know I'm gonna be using it. Connection circles is another thing I think definitely lends itself to an iPad user. So it's a thinking framework that helps you visualize relationships and understand complexity by seeing causes and effects on a system. So you draw a circle and then you add some key elements around your circle. So a software developer might do something kind of like this. 
You then draw arrows between elements that directly cause other elements to increase or to decrease, and then you draw a plus or a minus near the end of the arrow to denote that relationship. Now you can easily discover cause and effect relationships, and when they close, you can discover feedback loops. So again, just a couple of interesting examples of what you can do with this Apple Pencil beyond just using it to tap around. If you really wanna investigate these kinds of thinking frameworks, then check out untools.co. I'm not affiliated in any way. It was just interesting, it caught my eye, and I thought it'd be perfect for iPad users. If you're new around here, don't forget to follow at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram and Twitter. There's some really cool links down below. Um, Apple hype is coming back sometime soon. I can't tell you exactly when, uh, but soon. All right, all right, I think that's enough rambling. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.